Welcome to Tumamina Teaching. Tumamina Teaching converts the South African school curriculum into captivating video lessons and distributes them free of charge on familiar platforms like Facebook and on YouTube. If you have a look at these platforms, make sure you check the description below. In the description, you will find access to presentations and self-marking assessments that accompany the video lessons. In this particular session, we are going to tackle grade nine history for term two, which revolves around the Cold War. This session will consist of a few video lessons and after every video lesson we are going to discuss some questions regarding that video lesson. So make sure that you have a pen or paper ready or better your social science workbook as the video lessons are interactive and engaging. So quickly go and fetch that and be prepared for this session. Okay, so this marks our halfway point uh, for Grade 9 History Term 2, the Cold War. Let's see what we have covered so far. We looked at when the Cold War started. We looked at the main characteristic of the Cold War, um, tension. And we talked about that uh, the fact that the tension was essentially between the USSR and um, the USA. And then we talked about their ideological differences, communism versus capitalism. Then we talked about the liberation process of Europe by the Soviet Union and the USA or other allies. Um, we talked about the leaders of um, the Second World War, the prominent leaders, and the end of the Second World War in Europe and the end of the Second World War in the Pacific. And we focused on that as it leads into the Cold War. So let's start this lesson with a bit of a spot game, um, just to refresh our memories. Now you have to spot the correct color. Blue, red, yellow, green. Number one, spot President Truman. Number two, spot the symbol of the Soviet Union. Spot the odd one out. Spot the epicenter of tension during the Cold War. Spot the color that is associated with communism. Great, now that we are warmed up, we can start with our first inserted video lesson. We started with the differences between communism and capitalism. Then we looked at where these countries that were prominent during the Cold War are situated geographically. And then we discussed the end of the Second World War in the European sphere and also in the Pacific Ocean. I would like to go through something that might be confusing for some learners. The USSR stands for the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, while the Soviet Union is just short for that whole term. And Russia is part of the Soviet Union with all the countries that are subjugated to Russia. Now you'll remember in the third lesson we discussed how communism was forced onto countries that were previously under Nazi rule in the eastern part of Europe. All these countries formed part of the Soviet Union and America was afraid that communism would spread through Western Europe and that would hurt their economy. So how did America respond to the threat of the spread of communism in Europe? they followed a policy of containment. Containment was the United States diplomatic strategy to prevent the spread of communism during the Cold War. This strategy remained the central strategy from America's side throughout the whole Cold War. And how did they do it? Mainly through economic support. Imagine somebody supporting you financially. You are likely to support that person back. And that's more or less how it worked in this case, which brings me to the Marshall Plan. The Marshall Plan was an American program that provided support to countries that were devastated by the Second World War. The Marshall Plan was approved in 1948 and provided $15 billion for countries to rebuild themselves after the Second World War. 
The aid was sent to 16 European nations including Britain, France, Belgium, the Netherlands, West Germany and Norway. The plan was very effective and the US not only received support from these countries through the plan but their influence in these countries grew substantially. In response to the plan, the Russians also implemented their own plan, called the Molotov Plan, but this was less successful compared to the Marshall Plan. So let's end off this lesson by comparing the two superpowers, America and the USSR, as if it would be a boxing match between two heavyweights. Remember, we're talking about these countries during the Cold War and not their current state. Let's look at them geographically. The Soviet Union was the biggest country in the world, measuring an area of 22.4 million square kilometers, of which Russia was 17.1 million kilometers, compared to America, the fourth biggest country in the world, with an area of 9.8 million square kilometers. Now let's move over to the demography of the two nations. Demographics is another key term for today's lesson. Demographics is the study of statistics such as births, deaths, incomes and the incidence of diseases which illustrate the changing structure of human populations. Let's compare the two nations culturally. The Soviet Union suppressed the freedom of speech and controlled the media, while the USA protects the freedom of speech and also the freedom of media in their country. Now let's move over to their militaries. Now the military is very important in context of the Cold War. Here are some broad points, but do remember that this span is over 40 years. So during the Cold War, the military power fluctuated between the two nations. In terms of soldiers and tanks, Russia had a huge numerical advantage. The USA dominated the oceans with their large fleet. In terms of the Air Force, both parties were more or less on the same level. But more on this in lesson 7. Now let's look at the two nations economically. The Soviet Union was the second largest economy in the whole world and it was based on Marxism. It was also generally self-sufficient. In other words, it was not dependent on imports of other countries. The USA had the largest economy in the world and had loads of imports and exports. Their economy is based on the free market system of supply and demand. Okay, so what were the key takeaways of that video lesson? Firstly, the Soviet Union's expansion, the USSR's expansion throughout Europe was a major threat for the US, for America. And um, the policy of containment was implemented by the US. And this policy basically refers to um, trying to keep the spread of something. And in this case, it's trying to keep the spread of communism, almost like wearing a mask during COVID times. Um, it, they try to keep the spread of the virus and it can be like a metaphor in terms of keeping the spread of communism and they had different strategies to implement this policy of containment but we'll get to that later then we looked at the marshall plan the marshall plan was a, a plan that where the u.s gave a lot of aid to western european countries and this strengthened their bond um, and their relationship between western european countries and the united states of america and then the last takeaway of that video lesson is basically that uh, the US and the USSR competed throughout the whole Cold War on basically all fronts. So why did the USA see this spread of communism through and the influence of the Soviet Union throughout Europe as such a major threat? And it comes back to the differences between the two ideologies, communism and capitalism. And I know I've repeated myself many times when I, when I say this, but it's so important that you understand that these ideologies are incompatible. It's as if they are allergic um, towards each other. So let's do some revision. What I'm going to do is I am going to have two baskets, one basket on my left, capitalism, 
I'm going to add democracy here, okay, as they pair uh, together. And then on the right hand, a basket communism. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a scenario and you have to tell me, should it be in the left basket or in the right basket? I hope you understand. Let's try this. Peter owns his own business. Left or right? In the left basket. Susan is a nurse. She was given the job by the state. Left or right basket? Right basket. This nation has a dictator as a leader. Left or right basket? Right basket. This quote, we value the progress of the society higher than the progress of the individual. Left or right? In the right basket. Next one, freedom of speech is valued. Left or right basket? It should go to the left basket. And lastly, the headline of the newspaper criticizes the president. Hmm, left or right basket? Where will you find this? In the left basket. Okay, let's move over to this map of Europe at the height of Hitler's power in um, 1943. But first, let's just see if we can identify all these leaders. I'm just going to give here uh, number one, two, three, and four. And let's have a countdown of five seconds. See if you can get all the leaders. Okay, so this is Joseph Stalin, Adolf Hitler, Winston Churchill, and Franklin D. Roosevelt. Okay, let's move over to the liberation process of Europe. We did it in the second lesson, but let's just go through it quickly again. We know that through D-Day, they pushed back the Nazis from the West, and um, through the Italian campaign, they pushed back the Nazis from the South, mainly the USA, but many allied powers joined in in this effort and then from the eastern side they pushed germany back and all these countries here were liberated from nazi rules many countries in this area um, were liberated by the soviet union and then they reached stalin the soviet union reached berlin first it's just here behind hitler on this picture and that marked the end of um, the Second World War, um, also uh, Hitler after his suicide. Okay, so while we're on this European map, I would like to highlight these countries that were liberated by the Soviet Union. I might be missing one or two countries. Um, these countries, communist rule was established in these countries, and that was a major problem for the United States and for the other allies um, as they felt that that's not fair to enforce a, uh, a, 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 um, a political structure on these countries which that was a major source of tension at the beginning of the Cold War and then the question remained what will happen to Germany after the Second World War and lesson five the lesson that we're going to go into discusses what happened with Germany um, we know that it was div divided into four parts. Um, the Great Britain got a part, uh, the USA got a part, and France got a part, all in the western side of Germany. That's why this map already divided the two. And the eastern, that's just the west side, and the eastern side was given to the Soviet Union. But within the eastern side is Berlin and Berlin is the capital city of Germany and this was a very very important city and the Allies felt that they couldn't give that whole city to the Soviet Union let's have more details in the next inserted video lesson here we go 
If you can remember correctly, the First World War ended with the Treaty of Versailles. And this treaty was one of the major reasons for the outbreak of the Second World War. So the Allies decided not to follow the same route and would rather divide Germany into four. The USA would get a part, Britain would get a part, France would get a part and the Soviet Union would get the east side of Germany. As you can see, the capital city of Germany, Berlin, is situated on the Soviet Union side. And the Allies weren't prepared to just hand over the capital city to the Soviet Union. And they decided to divide the capital city into four parts as well. This is a strange reality if you think about it. A country divided into four and the capital city also divided into four parts. The Soviet Union did not like this division of Berlin and soon erected a blockade around Berlin to prevent supplies coming from West Germany into West Berlin. This was a massive problem for the people who stayed in West Berlin. How were they to survive without important supplies like food and coal? So how did the USA respond to this problem? President Truman decided to do something quite radical. He decided to fly in the supplies from West Germany into West Berlin. This was called the Berlin Airlift. This might not sound that radical, but remember there were about 2 million people who stayed in West Berlin. And to fly in supplies for 2 million people every day was quite extreme. The Berlin airlift lasted from June 1948 to May 1949 and in this period of time between 4 and 8 tons of supplies were flown in every day. By the end of this period almost 300,000 flights were made. It ended when the Soviet Union lifted the blockade. That same year, 1949, the western part of Germany merged and called this area the Federal Republic of Germany. The Soviet Union followed and the eastern part became the German Democratic Republic, the GDR. Let's move to the capital city of Berlin. Imagine you stayed on the eastern side during this time, then these things would have been part of your realities every day. But suppose you walked a couple of blocks further into the western side, then the following things would have been part of your realities every day. Which side would you choose? Would you have considered moving from the eastern side to the western side? Many people decided to do so and there was this great migration from the east to the west. Between 1945 and 1961 almost 3.5 million people moved from the east side to the west side of Germany. You can imagine how frustrating and humiliating it must have been for the Soviet Union and for Stalin himself, how people just so blatantly chose the west over the east. And this wasn't only hard on their ego, it was also hard on their wallet, as many people who moved from the east to the west were young professional people who contributed a lot to the economy. So how did the Soviet Union react to this problem of people just moving to the west? They decided to establish militarized borders between the east and the west. In Berlin they erected a 43 kilometer wall between east and west Berlin and a further 112 kilometers around west Berlin to keep people from entering that part of the city. Furthermore, a militarized border was erected in the whole of Germany between east and west, but it didn't stop there. It went further and divided Europe into two with a 7,000 kilometer border between east and west. This militarized border was known as the Iron Curtain between West and East Europe. I would like to elaborate on the intensity of the event that happened in Berlin. In the early hours of 13 August 1961, the border was drawn between East and West Berlin without any notice. Barbed wire was placed so that nobody could cross over and if you were on the one side you weren't able to go back to the other side. Many families were split into two that same day. You would visit on the one side and you weren't able to go back to the other side. There is even a case where a pregnant woman visited the eastern side and weren't able to go back to her husband on the western side. There are loads of stories like this 
and I'm going to dedicate the eighth lesson only to these type of stories of the Cold War. So let's end off this video lesson by going through the key takeaways from that session. First off, Germany was divided into four parts after the Second World War. The UK got a part, France got a part, um, America got a part, and the Soviet Union got the eastern part. Important to remember, Berlin is in the eastern part. And Berlin was so important to the Allies, they didn't want to give it to the Soviet Union. And it was also divided into four it's a very strange reality and at that stage shortly after that what happened then the Soviet Union um, in a sense encircled West Berlin keeping supplies from coming into West Berlin and they tried to force the Allies to give Berlin over to the Soviet Union they didn't succeed as um, uh, President Truman decided on uh, the Berlin airlift or approved the Berlin airlift and where thousands upon thousands of airplanes brought supplies into West Berlin. Then the next takeaway from that lesson we looked at the migration. So many people from East Germany moved to West Germany and from East Berlin moved to West Berlin. Um, at that stage in the early Cold War era there were no um, blockades between or no borders and they were just able to move over and many people did and that led to the militarized borders throughout Europe throughout Germany especially dividing Germany between west and east and the most well-known border was the border in Berlin in a city dividing a city into two I'm just going to go through a, an animated video just to show how this border looked like after it was developed, just to give you the, an idea. Okay, so now you can see here is the Berlin Wall. This is the western side because we can see all the graffiti. It means that people were able to get close to the wall. And then there's the sign that says you are now leaving the western sector. In other words, from the western side you had the liberty to just walk to the eastern side and now you can look at the militarized um, area and this was the eastern area they militarized it and kept people from moving from the eastern side into the western side as you can see it was highly guarded a lot of money was spent to militarize this area there's minefields guard dogs uh, people patrolling the area and it was very militarized on this side. There's no graffiti. Why? Because nobody was allowed to get close to that wall. So let's conclude this lesson by answering 10 multiple choice questions. I hope you have your pen and paper ready. At the end of the 10, we're going to give you the memo and then you can give yourself a mark out of 10. Here we go. Question number one, the United States plan to offer aid loans and technical assistance to Europe after the Second World War was the question number two Berlin is the capital of what European country Number three, what happened to Germany after the Second World War? Question number four, what country acquired the greatest addition to its territory after World War II? Question number five, why did East Germany build the Berlin Wall? Question number six, what country had control over the government 
of East Germany. Question number seven. The imaginary line that split the West European from the East European countries after the Second World War was... Number eight. True or false? The Berlin Wall is still operational today. Question 9. Which group of countries became Soviet satellites after World War II? And finally, when Stalin blockaded Berlin in 1947, Truman responded with... Thank you. This concludes this lesson. In the next lesson, we are going to look at the arms race and the space race and stories that happened during the Cold War. We hope you benefited from this video lesson. Our vision at Tumor Mina Teaching is to accelerate access to quality education. And our dream is to see learners across South Africa flourishing academically. We are a non-profit company and we are entirely dependent on public support. We produce lessons at the rate at which they are funded. As soon as a lesson is funded, it is published to the entire growing audience of Tumor Mina Teaching. Please consider taking hands with us in one of the following ways. Share our content with others that can benefit from it. A great way to support us is to find us on my school and to add us as your beneficiary. And consider donating towards a lesson or ask your company's CSI department to partner with us. We are a PBO, so your donation is tax deductible. Our contact details you'll find on our website www.tmteaching.co.za If you want to reach out to us, please email us on admin at tmteaching.co.za